Dr. Kevorkian is in Southfield, Michigan, with his attorney, Mayor Morgan Roth, for his first live television interview. Gentlemen, good morning. I know, Dr. Kevorkian, you have been, over recent days, dealing with being out of prison and also with the onslaught of people asking you questions about whether you will help someone commit suicide again. How are you adjusting to all of this attention after having been in prison for eight years? It's not too difficult. It's uh, at least in, a, in an atmosphere of freedom. So, and the questions usually aren't too difficult to answer. Mm. Well, the, the question about whether you will uh, help someone commit suicide again, you've answered no. But that has not changed, you say, your position on whether doctors actually do this. In fact, you say that doctors quietly do this on their own. What evidence do you have of that, sir? Oh, uh, there have been polls taken of doctors and uh, anonymous polls, and I think more than half say they've done it before, and 30% say they do it still. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that this is uh, okay? Why do you think this should be allowed? Well, it's one of our natural rights that we're born with, the right to, to control the circumstances of one's own death. It can't be controlled by external forces and be a right. The only thing there is that law can block your use of it, but that doesn't mean that they destroy the right. The right is always there. You can't destroy it. You're it, born with it. But in these cases of, you say, about 130 people you uh, say you've helped die, how do you know that these people uh, are exercising this so-called right, knowing full well what is ahead? In other words, don't you need to validate scientifically or with a, uh, with a psychiatrist's help whether these people are capable of making this choice uh, before you actually get involved, if this is in fact what you embrace, sir. Of course, that goes without saying almost. Did you do that then with all 130 of these cases, sir? I think every doctor does that. Every doctor validates the person's request. Is it really a, a, a medical problem? That's why a person goes to a doctor, because who else is the expert? And if the doctor decides, yes, it's true, this person has a serious disease, yes, it's true, it looks like he's suffering, and yes, it's true, that there seems to be nothing to help him. And, and the, the person has a natural right to request help by a competent professional in ending his life. And the competent professional has a natural right to accede to that request and, and help him. Both of, both of those rights, that bilateral uh, right, is blocked by law, but that's all. That yeah. doesn't destroy the right. Well, I guess the question I'm asking is about whether they're psychologically capable of making such a decision that they will not change their mind on later if they're in so much pain. Let me just go on and, and uh, basically get your response to this. From the, the New York Times just has an editorial out uh, that says, um, it calls you basically, it says you've emerged from prison as deluded and unrepentant as ever that you're saying that what you did is right. I didn't care what they did or didn't do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it right. The irony, according to the New York Times, is that you did it wrong, and in performing assisted suicide so badly, you besmirched the movement you hope to energize. What is your reaction I, to that? I think the irony of the New York Times is quite contrary to the irony of the polls. The most recent polls are 92% that are in favor of Jack of Orkin. You can always get an editorial by somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about or disagrees or is an antagonist, but you don't take one person's opinion against 92% of the public. Well, did you, did you pursue? But in any event, another answer too, is that in any case that there was any doubt regarding their mental capacity, Dr. Gavorkian had them referred to a psychiatrist and got a psychiatrist report and an analysis of the person's problem. I never help a patient without a report from the patient's doctor. They wouldn't communicate with me directly because they were afraid to. But I, I insisted that the patient get a copy of the report and send it to me before I even talk to them. Well, certainly this will not be the last we've heard of this debate. Thank you to you and also Mayor Morgan Roth for joining us this morning. You're welcome.